Jimmy Butler, Joe Kim Noah both edging out Derrick Rose. Wow. As we approach the quarter mark in the NFL season, power rankings for week four are hot off the press. And here is your top 10. Take a look, marinate on those leading the pack. The Patriots, no surprise there, followed by the Cardinals, Packers, Broncos, and Bengals in the top five. And then you see the rest of the 10. Skip, what's your biggest issue with this entire list of all 32 teams? Molly, Stephen A. Smith, my biggest issues are two. Okay. Number one, the Baltimore Ravens, now 0-3, mm -hmm. are being dramatically underrated, having fallen all the way down to 22 in the power rank. 22. And I also think the Minnesota Vikings are being dramatically overrated as they have risen all the way at 2-1, and one, up to number 13 in the power index. Now, let me make my case for Baltimore first. Obviously, they're about to play tomorrow night against your Steelers in Pittsburgh featuring Michael Vick. If Baltimore wins this game, and I'm, I'm ready to go on record, I think Baltimore will win this game. Baltimore, by the way, is favored by two and a half in this game. Just, just take that to your bank real quick. They're favored by two and a half. Okay. I think they will win this game. I think they will get on a roll against a schedule that I find pretty easy. Mm -hmm. And I know most NFL schedules aren't, it's, it's hard to call it easy, but by NFL yep. standards, this is an easy schedule because they got the Jaguars, they got the Browns obviously twice, they got the Rams at home, San Diego at home, mm -hmm. they get to go to San Francisco, and that I put get to, you know, and, and the emphasis on get to go to San Francisco, and they do have Kansas City at home, just, and that's on top of all their other division games, obviously. But Joe Flacco has been pretty extraordinary in his games at Pittsburgh. He's won four times against your Steelers in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. out of 10 tries. Mm -hmm. He's won a, a playoff game at Pittsburgh last year. So I, I think Joe Flacco is gonna feel real good about himself going to Pittsburgh. Now, if you wanna fire back at me and say at 0-3, they've just learned how to lose games, like they're just gonna play close enough to, to be in the game and then lose it, you can feel free. You can tell me that without Mr. Suggs, mm -hmm. my friend Terrell Suggs, mm -hmm. that they've lost too much leadership as well as ability. He's an aging player, obviously, at 33, but he still brought a lot of pop to that defense and obviously to that locker room. If you want to make that case, I'm fine with it. I think this roster is much better than it's played so far. And by the way, all three games it played went to the wire. They could have won all three times. They, they sh probably should have won at Denver. Flacco threw a great pass to Crockett Gilmore in the end zone, hit him right in the hands, and two Broncos came across and made a hellacious play to save the day and save the game in that one. Then they had to stay out west. They went to the Raiders. We're going to talk about the Raiders a little. I also think the Raiders are being underrated, yep. but I'm going to save that for a little bit. But remember, that game was 37-33 to 33 because Derek Carr hit Seth Roberts with 30 seconds left for a touchdown from 12 yards out that won the game 37 to 33 so they probably should have won that game mm -hmm. and then we know what happened against the Bengals and we we're both saying hey the Bengals are better than we thought but that game the Ravens led that until 216 were left in that game at home they, they had a chance to close that deal until Andy Dalton finally hit AJ Green from seven yards for a touchdown to win the game so they they could have maybe should have won all three games so I'm I'm looking at a team that ESPN's football power index, our in-house sort of mm -hmm. logarithm, if you will, that system says that, that they should be favored to win 10 of their remaining 13 games. Well, well, that's pretty good. So, so I'm saying, what's the problem with Baltimore? And I know with the with our power index, where our writers vote, they just look at the record and they say they're on three, so they're down to 22. Right. But just a quick point. The, the flip side of this is the Vikings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they lost a game at San Francisco, and we now kind of know what the 49ers are and right. what they're not. Yeah. But right. they lost 20 to three. Mm -hmm. Then they beat Detroit 26 to 16. We're kind of seeing what Detroit is and mostly what it is not. Can't right. Run the ball. Right. And then San Diego. We're starting to see what they are and what they definitely are not. And they beat them 31 to 14. That's overrated. They're not going to be that good. I, they're not going to make the playoffs. I'll just, I, I said it before the year, 
I don't think there's any threat to Aaron Rodgers Packers in that division. So those are my two big issues, and obviously Minnesota is all the way up at 13. Well, first of all, I completely disagree with you about the Ravens. Okay. I think that they belong. Uh, they may not belong at number 22. Like, for example, I don't think the Chargers even at 1 and 2 deserve to be ranked ahead of the Ravens personally. Mm -hmm. That's just my personal belief. But when you're 0-3, you're 0-3. When you've lost Terrell Suggs after letting the feet get away to Chicago and you can't defend against the run, mm -hmm. then you really got to problem okay so I look at the Baltimore Ravens and I say that's problematic not only that but when you look at them and they can't run the football Justin Forzette has really dropped off yeah, so far compared last to year. last year so, so far, far so far compared yep. to last year and you combine that with year. with Steve Smith Jr. what a beautiful name by the way mm -hmm. him being Steve Smith Sr. I'm sorry when you consider uh, no you're okay. senior he's junior well, well I ain't right? I, no I'm Stephen A but oh, okay. I mean, if there was a if there was a Stephen uh, A Smith uh -huh. Sr. and he yeah. said that that would be different okay. but I'll give him the senior title right mm -hmm. now it doesn't bother me at all he's He's big time, but he's the only weapon that they really have at the wide receiver spot right now. I think that's problematic. So even though I would say that they shouldn't be at 22, it's only because I see a team like the Chargers, who to me is relatively unimpressive. And I would say to you, I have a problem with that. Here's my other thing. When I look at the Colts at number 14, I got a problem with that. I think the Giants at number 15, okay, and I'm looking at the Raiders at number 20. I think they both should be put ahead of the Colts right now because the Colts, even in their lone victory this mm -hmm. year, was incredibly unimpressive. I, I, Andrew Luck turning the football over, them giving up the points they gave up, mm -hmm. them seeing to be in flux right now. I think the way that they've struggled, again, ignoring the record and just yep. looking at what we're seeing on the field. We look at the Giants. They could have beat the Dallas Cowboys on Monday night. They could have beat the Atlanta Falcons yeah, that second game of the season. The and then they ultimately won okay. against the Redskins. So I think that the Giants should definitely be up there. And I'm going to give the Raiders some props. After getting outscored yeah. 33 to nothing before scoring like 13 or 14 points in the opener, okay, they show up the next two games and they show out and they produce. Okay, we're going to we'll save it, save it, because right. we're going to we'll get to them. That's, but we'll I agree with you on we'll that. We'll get to them, so yeah. I want to elevate the Raiders. Then I look at the Dolphins at number 23, and I'm saying to myself, why are they not lower? Why are the Titans lower than them? With Mariota, yeah, they lost the last two games, but they won their open, and as far as I'm concerned, they've been more competitive. Than the, than the Dolphins, and they look to be on the way up, and the Dolphins look to be on the way down. I would put the Titans ahead of the Dolphins, and I would even put the Browns ahead, because even though the Browns got blown out, we know they had some quarterback issues and what have you, but they were relatively competitive. When you look at what Johnny Manziel did, mm -hmm. that was definitely impressive, and then their loss to the Raiders this past weekend, they mm -hmm. played decent football. Again, they're going this way, it seems to me, although incrementally considering the lack of weapons that they have at their disposal, and the Dolphins, to me, are not living up to expectations. So I think I would give them the edge over the Dolphins. And then I look at, yes, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yes, they are one and two. But other than that stinker in game one for a rookie quarterback mm -hmm. in Jameis Winston, yep. over the last two games, they beat the New Orleans Saints, and they were competitive last week. And I just look at them from the perspective that you've got a rookie quarterback yep. who's, who's learning to play the game, didn't make nearly as many mistakes over the last two games compared to what he made in the first game. And then you look at the Vincent Jackson, the Mike Evans of the world, Doug Martz of the world. You know that Lovey Smith can coach that defense once again. Even though they have a one and two record, I see them going this way. Okay. I see the Dolphins going that way. And my last point is the Steelers. Because when I look at the top of these rankings right here, I'm looking at the Steelers, and although I can respect the Seahawks, and they are my Super Bowl pick, as of yet, I don't believe they deserve to be ranked ahead of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't like that at all. I think the Steelers mm. need to be ahead of the Seahawks. Okay. That's where I'm at. All right. Now, back to my original point. Sure. I'm going to hold your feet to the fire. Please. Are you telling me the Ravens are done? They're not going to make the playoffs? I think uh, it looks that way, Skip. Okay. I think, uh, you know what? If they lose this game to Pittsburgh tomorrow night, I think it's safe to say they're pretty much done at 0-4. I think the Steelers are going to have the challenge of their life because there's a desperate Ravens team that's going up against Michael Vick, mm -hmm. not Big Ben Roethlisberger. That's why I'm going to think about that pick even more because the Ravens back against the wall. They lose this game. They're not making the playoffs. Okay. The season's over. Okay. I'm going to dig in. They will not lose this game, and I give them still a very good shot at winning this division. Even from 0 and 3. I got you. Okay. I got you. That's I how much respect that I have for the head coach and the general I have manager. A tremendous respect for Ozzie Newsom yep. and, and John, John Harbaugh. Harbaugh. You know that. But I think there comes a point in time in a season where it just ain't your year. Suggs going down, mm -hmm. I think, is a devastating blow to the defense and to the spirit of this team. They have to win tomorrow night to save this season. We'll see what I pick tomorrow.
and get Justin Forsett going again. I don't yes. know, that Vikings one, I agree with you, 13, that seems a little steep there yes. as well. Skip and Stephen A. call him the best coach ever, but many are calling for his job. We'll get into the Larry Brown situation on the other side of the break. Stay here.